Hey guys, Anthony 4 Before Diesel, and thanks for joining us. We're going to talk about a couple of different things here. I might mention about that uh, really uh, uncommon, painful DTC P0400, but before we do, you may have seen in another video, or you may not have, um, this scan gauge, which we've just, just received in the mail oh, a couple of days ago anyway. I haven't looked at the books because I've used them before, so I've got a fair idea unless things have changed. That's the lead that you plug into your uh, ODB port. There's your plug that you can plug into either the back or the side, and you can actually connect multiple. So here you've got four screen outputs. If you're really OCD and you want to look at lots of different things, you can plug in more of these and you can have eight or, I don't know, I think I assume you can just have as many as you like, as many things you've got to read. Now, it's as simple as that, really. It's pretty much plug and play. If you want to read some other data, which it may not be included, um, you may need to add the PIDs, which some of them may be included in these sort of books and on their website, and you can Google and that sort of thing. Or you can just keep watching the videos, and we're going to show you all the codes that we use to read most of all the transmission, uh, Toyota transmissions. There's a whole heap of different codes. You don't need them all. You just need to have at least one of the ones that works for you. Um, so the simple, it come, they come with two double-sided tapes. So you could, technically, you could install that into... Um, Two different vehicles right so you could velcro it on uh, which is what i'm going to do most likely i'm going this one's going to go into the 2022 150 i'm going to stick that on the bottom there like that and there's probably other ideas people stick them on the back and put the cord out the side and all that so you can uh, let us know where you put yours in the comments if you've got one um, i'm not telling you, you should go buy one or not or whatever i'll tell you what i like about this right this certainly does transmission temperature. You may need to put input the codes, but for our vehicles, the Toyotas that we use, it does the transmission temperature. Uh, does my head in a little bit. I like having the little, you know, wireless without the cord, but you know, if it doesn't give you the data you want, um, then it's not really that helpful, is it? The other good thing about this is you can monitor things. You can have it permanently there monitoring things without um, having to open your phone. You might be using your phone for maps or something else. So you don't, you know, you might not, if you've got an engine light, I don't know, like if it's just there, you just, and we'll show you in videos anyway. I'm not gonna go into too much. Let's just get it installed into the vehicle. And that little mention about, I'll tell you the other thing I like about this, see what it says here, made in USA. Now I don't really care where things are made. As long as I, don't, I try and avoid um, things that are made in, you know, you know what I'm talking about. I don't even need to say it, do I? Like, of course, I like Australian-made stuff. Support your own country. Support other good countries. Support each other. But, you know, you know, I don't want to be CCP, you know, not good. So, anyway, this is not made there. This is made USA and happy days, right? And I'm not saying they always do the right thing either, by the way, you know. We don't want to get political on this. Anyway, we're getting it installed into the vehicle and um, show you how it works. Another quick tip before you install these, take note, with every bit of Velcro, you've got the, I'm going to call it the fluffy side and the rough side, right? There's two sides to the story, right? So just make sure when you install it to the vehicle, you can go whichever way you want, really. Personally, I'll put that, the hard hook side, if you like, not the furry side. I'll put the furry side on the scan gauge and the rough hook side on the vehicle. And you need to do it, so if you go to do it in the other vehicle, don't just go and stick that. You only obviously need half of that because the other half's going to be on the bottom of the scan gauge. Of course, unless you use double thickness, you know, you could do that, put it in one vehicle. Because some people are thinking, uh, you know, it's not much uh, Velcro for, but that's right. The problem is, it's not always a flat surface, so by putting it all the way across is a waste. So you just need it in the middle. And I can tell you, I've used these before. It does sit stable enough. It doesn't move around or anything like that. It's really good. Um, which is why I'm telling you about it, uh, you know, um, there's pros and cons of every product and we'll get to that if there's any, you know um, But at the moment, we're just about to stick that on. So let's do that. Here we go. We've got the tape off. This is Captain Risky right here All right, it's gonna estimate about the middle as I said not a big deal I hope not anyway. Oh, looks about right on it. Just give it a good press down, you know, like you do You've done this before. This is easy stuff, right? So give it a good press. I'm just going to let that uh, set for a little bit. And then I'll go to the vehicle, run the wires, no big deal. All right, so here we are at the vehicle. I just want to point out one of the main advantages. I did have an EDS. You've probably heard of that. It's a cheaper version. Um, but to my knowledge, you can't program it. I couldn't. Pro I didn't have any way to program to enter PIDs and that sort of thing. So they don't do transmission. 
well on my vehicle it didn't and there was no way that i know of to enter that now that could be wrong so if you found a way to enter codes into those let us know but this like i said it's quite simple where's this going to sit it's just going to kind of sit can end up sitting kind of like that right now what we want to do is so the back sits against the edge of the plastic there it's not going to it's not going to rub on here or do any damage because it comes to a point, if you know what I mean. So you're not rubbing against a flat surface or anything like that. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, and I know from experience, had them in vehicles, seen them in vehicles like this, right? So that can sit there. We're just going to stick that down there like that. And then for this application, see the wire at the back? No, that's not going to work. So it's going to be sitting there like that. We'll worry about that first. Then we'll get that plugged in. Simple as that. Clip that plug there in. And we're going to tuck it in down the side, kind of like where these wires are. This is just a phone charger. It comes out of there and I'll just, to tidy it up, it's gone in there. I haven't done anything, you know, more time, please, more time. And I'll sort something out. But um, that's something else we need. Some nice little black angled USBs that come straight up for the length of the phone to the, uh, just here to the quad lock. But anyway, um, the wire's going to come out. It's going to pretty much just go straight in there alongside. You can coil it up anywhere underneath here that's out of the way. If you need to use the original uh, black ties that came with it and then that is going to what we're going to find down here is like i said a plug right and you're going to plug it in there and just have your wire in a neat direction so i'm going to get that done and i'll uh, show you what it looks like afterwards two hours later no nah, just joking five minutes later um just want to show you so on the one on this 150 prado if you like so i got the light there a bit of reflection but you can see where it sits it's not blocking your view of any of the gauges there so this is why i like this spot all there and you can see the top one see the bottom of the display there so for me the view if i go down to there kind of like not blocking anything so i think it's a good little position so it sits there nice and neat um, I don't know if I said this, probably didn't, but of course, like everything, don't forget to clean. So clean before you stick anything so it stays there. You can see it's quite secure. You can press on it because you've got that backing of the plastic dash there. So you can actually, when you press, you know, pressing the buttons, you know, for you press it, press the right button, it'll um, wake up, right? So there it is. Anyway, let's go and have a look underneath where the wires are and, you know, look, you can just see here, right? Look plug it in the side and tuck it down there just it's like it's meant to be you may have a different vehicle but there's always a way you just need to spend some time to make it work so it's nice and neat. think about it um you know you can do what you want you can sit up on top of the dash here if you want that's not what i'm going to do now look at this iphone charger wouldn't that be good if it's black this is what i do completely off top for a minute before we go down there off topic getting a bit excited right so we've got the usbs permanent power from the dual battery right so they're always lit up just like the other ones over here you can see right uh, I just stick the charge because my obviously the quad locks right here. I just need the power lead right here And uh, so I just sit that in there like that ready to go Boof and you can you know if you need a bit more you can just pull it in and push it in and out like that Be careful disclaimer you could get your wire stuck in there and have to cut it and rip it out You never know I don't know how you know just take your time have a look You know have a play with the flaps and go oh yeah you know of course you won't be able to close that but I never close my vents. Why would I want to close them? Anyway, I don't close the vents. You can still adjust that, no problem. And uh, just saying, you know, so you can plug that in there. And when I'm not using it, I just sit it there like that so it's out of the way. Of course, white doesn't look so good though, does it? But, you know, whatever. So there's that. Beautiful. Let's just have a look, see if we can see. There's the coil of wire sitting there, right? So the wire goes in the side there. It's just sitting there. And I've used those two little twisty tie things to put in a little coil there. And you'll see down the bottom here, right, there's the plug, nice and somewhere there, nice and neat, right, to the side, and it goes up, so it's not, you don't want cords dangling on your feet, if we ever work on your vehicle, don't bring in our vehicle with dangly wires, the lowest one is the Toyota one that's there like that, that's the only one that's for the uh, fuel release or the bonnet release, those two things, right, no wires hanging down, right, and anyone that works on your vehicle, if they give it back to you, if they've installed something, there's wires hanging down, or you can even see them from here, uh, I'd be saying, hey, hang on a minute. Anyway, we're going off topic. There it is. There's the scan gauge. That's installing it. And we're going to have another video soon showing you the PIDs and stuff like that. So, bada bing. Catch you soon. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, turn the bell on so you don't miss it. And if you like it, you know, smash the like button. See ya.